Barglow says, what a strange object to find, oneself. Something vital and central remains absent or hidden. Indeed, we seek multiple ways to find ourselves with an endless effort. Our body, as our constant in space and time, tries to adapt to these changes. We are observers, movers and users of our bodies. But to which extent are we able to observe this vehicle? We relate ourselves as thinking subjects and reflect upon the objects around us. We can observe these objects around us because we can walk around them and stare at them from above and below. Yet, our own phenomenal body is not accessible to us as an object is. Therefore, we experience several ambiguities as we tend to perceive our own bodies physically, sensationally, and philosophically. So how can we explore these ambiguities in order to discover more about ourselves? Can we benefit from developing technologies, specifically from virtual reality? As a prologue of my main research question, can we explore bodily awareness with virtual reality mediums, I have designed an experiment empowering perception, ambiguity in lived body experiences, in which I have worked with 20 participants individually. In my setup, I used a virtual reality glass and a simple 3D camera. I connect the camera to the glasses, so in this way, the user of the glasses was able to see what the camera was simultaneously recording. I moved around them with the camera in my hand, and in this way I was being the external eye upon them while they were watching the recorded images from the camera. I interviewed the participants before and after the intervention. So the first interview came right before the virtual exposure. We talked about how they relate to their own bodies and the notion of body ownership in general. I asked them from which specific angles they would like to observe themselves from and from which angles they would rather not see. So some of them wanted to see and revisit these undesired perspectives they think they have, and some strictly told me not to provide this or that vision of themselves. According to their requests, I have enabled them to revisit their own body in virtual reality. The second interview came right after the exposure. The participants reported several feelings such as confusion, irritation, fear of aging, but also tranquility and self-acceptance, which weeks after the exposure has reflected on their personal relationships. I'm going to give you two of the most interesting results I have gathered from these post-exposure interviews. And in order to protect their privacy, I'm not going to reveal their names, as some of them might be here right now. So one of the participants, as he observed himself from a specific angle, he realized the similarity in between his own smile and his brother's. Two weeks after the interview, he called me and said, the realization of such simple yet a very fundamental similarity in between him and his brother has indirectly affected their ongoing emotional conflicts. He was not as angry and as stubborn as he was before. So in a way, the rigidity of his judgment against his brother was slightly diminished. Another participant with a very short haircut, as she observed herself from behind, she realized that her haircut was uneven. Since months, her boyfriend was telling her, mm, your haircut looks uneven from behind, why don't you get it straightened? Each time she shrugged and internalized his saying as a critique due to her own personal insecurities. But after having seen it herself from a very drastic point of view, she decided to reconsider her judg judgments against her boyfriend. <laughs> so, 
observing ourselves from an external point of view can clearly alter the perception of ourselves and may consequently affect our interpersonal relationships. So therefore, this prologue had led me to work further with virtual reality setups. So departing from the idea of observing ourselves from outside, I found the chance to explore the body from the eyes of the other with the machine to be another. The machine to be another is a virtual setup in which you can swap bodies with another person. It is developed by Be Another Lab, a virtual reality research group based in Barcelona. We have worked together in several workshops, and actually the machine to be another is in this building right now. We are using it for a very interesting experiment design. So the machine to be another is a virtual setup in which two virtual reality glasses are cross-connected to two individual cameras, which are integrated on the glasses. So due to this cross-connection, each person can experience their own body in the body of the encounter. We ran the machine to be another in several workshops with many people, and which gave us the chance to explore such interesting embodiment experience. One of the many interesting anecdotes is two friends around the ages of 13 and 14 have swapped bodies. A week later, one of them told me that he felt the need to speak less and felt more comfortable with his playmate during the course of a, of a play or a simple activity. So in other words, he and his playmate developed a less verbal and more instinctual way of communicating with each other, which could be considered as a very significant effect of embodiment experience. I have been in the machine to be another myself several times, and the most fascinating moment for me was the moment when the paravan in between two people lifts, and due to the cross-connection, you are confronted with your own doppelganger in the body of your encounter. Many participants, including myself, show the tendency to come closer and have a physical contact with the other. Well, in this case, with your actual bodily self in the body of your encounter. The thrill and uncanny feelings accompany distinctive happiness as you try to hold your own hands. This moment is specifically important for me, considering my own research question, can we use virtual reality as a medium to explore bodily awareness, specifically the perception we have upon our own bodies? So from such experiences, we might begin to say that virtual setups do provide an unusual perspective in which we can explore ourselves from a very interesting point of view and it is possible to observe certain shifts in the idea of ourselves, and it is reflections in our interpersonal relationships. To conclude, I would like to encourage everyone to approach developing technologies without fear and bring virtual technology into the course of scientific research more. I personally will continue to extend the usage of virtual reality mediums and eventually, hopefully, use it for self-discovery. Thank you. <laughs>